Good day, tamers. Welcome back to some more lifestyle news with me again, swiftly. And as you can see in the background here, we are still boxed up, ready to move whenever we can. Hopefully, we'll be moving early in the next year. And I will be super honest with you, there will probably be more streams and there will probably be more content on the channel. Or at least try to be more content, more live content on the channel. Because we're moving to a bigger place and I'll actually have my own room to record and stream in. So that way I'm not having to be uh, pestering with people with my Digimon nonsense, as we can say. Uh, but let's go back to the, the business of this, this video here where we are going to be talking about Glasgow. So Friday morning, left the house about half six, got to Peterborough for about ten to eight. And then got on the train about quarter past to twenty past eight to whisk away to the lovely, beautiful Edinburgh in Scotland. But that wasn't our first part, as you know, it was Glasgow. So we got to Edinburgh, got to enjoy the beautiful architecture that is the Edinburgh Station, Waverley, and just jumped straight from there into the train. To be fair, it was a nice little changeover. I think we jumped off the train about twenty past. 12 and then we jumped onto the train from Edinburgh to Glasgow at quarter to three sorry quarter to one and then we got to Edinburgh I think just after half two no sorry just after half one so it's like a 45 minute train ride quite nice beautiful countryside in, in Scotland if you get a chance to go please please do um, obviously going through everything on a train is just obviously a lot different than going on a plane you, don't, you know clouds are lovely everywhere but uh, the scenery is very nice from the train. I like going on the train. It's a very calming experience, I always find. Planes, it's always just a case of like, it's always super cramped. Uh, everyone's just whinging because they want to get to the, the destination as quick as possible. No one really seems to want to be there. Whereas on the train, everyone's like, if, if everyone's really busy working and they don't really want to like just deal with it and they're just in their own space or, you know, on the Friday, for instance, I went up there and I think there's like two other people in my carriage and it was quite peaceful there was a lady next to me who just wouldn't shut up the whole journey i'm gonna be nice to just say that she was uh, complaining about her boss the whole time there so it was, there was a great four-hour conversation of me listening to her just slight her boss which I'm, I'm sure if anyone could have recorded that and said that to her boss she would no longer have a job but there we go um but yeah i love trains trains are fantastic um you just get to have a nice peaceful journey and just do your own thing i will say that i do wish i had an editing laptop or something i can do while going on there sometimes because having four hours to yourself is fantastic but occasionally you would like to just be able to do a little bit of work so don't feel so lazy while just relaxing in the uh, countryside of the UK then we got to Glasgow at half one walked up to my hotel felt like it took me four months to get there because it was up a it was just uphill and I also didn't know I was going so it just felt like it was taking me forever and in fact to be fair it was like a three probably like a seven minute walk got there and the plan was going to be drop my stuff off and then head down to Tokyo Toys to uh, just hang out and have some fun. Unfortunately, when getting there, uh, checking was strictly 3 o'clock, no earlier than that. And I did say to him, hey, is there any chance I can just drop off my uh, luggage here? And I'll come back and sort it out later. And he says, you can, but it's only for about an hour or so. Because once it hits 3 o'clock, this area then becomes undesignated for luggage. So... Please be coming back about 3 o'clock-ish, maybe the latest at 10 past 3. I thought myself, there's no point really going then, because it's like quarter to two at this point. And I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll have a drink. Because I had a drink since first thing in the morning. So I was like, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a Diet Coke. Sat in the window, watched the, uh, the, the public walk up and down the street. Beautiful, 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 miserable rainy day. It was wet all weekend, let's just, let's just say that. It was nice, it was nice this morning. Got in the room at three, launched my stuff across the room, went straight down to Tokyo Toys. Before getting to Tokyo Toys, I went to a place called McDonald's Bakery, not associated with the uh, fast food conglomerate, I believe. And I can honestly say without a doubt, it's probably the best bread I've had for a very long time. There's a lovely bakery about half an hour away from where I currently live, and they make amazing bread. But McDonald's, they, they also make amazing bread. So again, if you're ever in the area, there's a couple of stores up in Scotland. You know, head down there, get yourself a, uh, a nice soft a cub, bap, whatever the Scottish would prefer to call their uh, rolls, I guess. But no, really, really nice. Very, very good pricing. I think for a drink, uh, a, a cupcake and a roll, it was like six quid. You can't complain. Really good. Went to Tokyo Toys, had a look around. 
couldn't find any Digimon stuff, unfortunately. Besides uh, some old sets and packs, which is nice. It's nice to see some more packs around. But essentially, across the road and up one is Geek Retreat. Now, some of you may have heard about Geek Retreat if you were living in America. I do know a lot of my uh, subscribers and watchers are American, watching the UK burn from inside the Digimon scene. Geek Retreat is a very unique company. It is uh, associated with the geeks that want to retreat somewhere safe. But it's a kind of a weird conglomerate in the gigging space. Not quite loved by the people that go there, but is appreciated that we have a space to go to. And they had, I think, a couple of cases left of EX7 and went in there, pulled a couple of things, and I think I pulled myself a Metalatramon, which, you know, I've got places of it already, so it's available to whoever wants it. I think I gave it away to uh, Dean in the end, Mr. Crimson, and some Shotos. Shotos? Mm, I love me some Shotos. And then. Crimson wanted to go and have some break, uh, some dinner, so we went to KFC. I grabbed myself another drink, and he uh, grabbed himself a, uh, a small boxed meal. Went back to Geek Retreat, chatted, as they say, uh, shot the shit. And then we got ready for the evening regional, which was more of a joke than anything else. But I think there were 63 people that turned up for that event, and it was a hell of a good time. I was learning how to play the 7 Demon Lord deck. I went 4-2, and two, so I was quite happy with that, and I thought to myself, yeah, it's going to be a really good day to go into that. Uh, I pulled another Shoto, but I also pulled myself a BL Star Ace, so now three of those. I'm happy with that. Then, we went to German Donner Company. Really nice. I thought it was really good food. Um, the replay also thought it was really nice. Dean said it was terrible. It was the worst thing he's ever eaten in his life. So, we won't be going back there again with Dean. And then we all went our separate ways for the evening. And then I bumped into some people that I saw at the Geek Retreat event. And they said they were going to be very hilarious that night. So uh, good thing you're not on the same floor as them. Is what it is. So that was that for the, the Friday evening. And then I actually made some little videos, which I don't think I'm going to put up here. I think I'm just going to do like one long vlog if I can. And I made a little video for you guys talking about the night itself rather than what you just heard there. And put my phone on charge. Didn't think anything of it. I didn't think anything of it. So let's like YouTube stuff on so I can just listen to it while I'm eating my dinner. Go back to my phone about twenty minutes later. I was like, my phone's not charging. It's saying it's charging, but it's losing power. That's really strange. So I turn off all the apps and leave it on charge. And go back to it about another ten minutes later. It's still not charging, still still losing power. And I'm like, crap, this isn't gonna make this won't wake me up in the morning. I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. So I'm looking around, and literally, it's like half eleven at night. There's no way in hell that I can get anywhere close by that's going to sell me a charger. And I'm panicking, so I go downstairs. I think it's like ten to twelve at this point when I've been looking for everything. And said to him, "Like I'm really sorry, you wouldn't have any like USB USB C chargers, or would you just the cables? I got a plug, but I haven't got a charger. It doesn't be working." And I was like, "I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. We don't, we don't like have anything in the back or anything like that. I'm really sorry." I was like, you wouldn't know a place that sells these. Maybe I can go get one in the morning. He goes, you're actually going to look. I said, there's a 24-hour convenience store around the corner, like literally around the corner, that will sell chargers. I was like, oh, where is this magical place? He's like, if you go out the hotel, do a left, you'll come to the corner and it'll be Cine World, cinema chain in the UK. Go down the street like 20 metres and then look across the road. There's a little convenience store there. It says, look, oh, t convenience 24 hours like that. Pop in there, he'll sort you out. I was like, all right. So I walked in, walked in, guy's on his knees, cleaning his floor. I said, I'm really sorry to bother you, mate. Do you have chargers? It's like, Apple or Samsung? I said, Samsung. He goes, is it a C? I said, it's a US, USB-C charging point, but I don't know if there's any difference between a C charger and a, like an A charger or a B charger. And he goes, hold on, we've got stuff in the back. I'll pop one out for you. Popped it out, grab my phone. Yep, yeah, that's the one. All right, take it. Awesome. Phone's charging. Great. Back on, back on for Saturday. So get to bed finally about one o'clock in the morning pass out I'm just like I'm going to play Demon Lords it was fun the night before I could do with some more practice with it it's not, I know it's a decent deck and it's like a fairly good like in the middle kind of deck morning of the event look outside the window it's raining cats and dogs like it is just throwing it down it will drown a small child it was really heavy but I'm like you know what do the boys want to do? Because originally they wanted to walk, and they're like, nah, nah, we're, we're going to go later. We're having breakfast. I was like, okay, I'm going to go up there now then. So I walk up this goddamn Scottish hill, and you get to the top, 
and there's another hill. It's like, all right, right. So you go around, you go around the hill, and then you get to the top of that hill, and there's another goddamn hill. And you get to the top of that hill, and there's a steep incline. It's like that. It's like a like a seventy degree incline hill. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, man! It's throwing it down. I am soaked. How much more do we have to go? Check the map. It's like, yeah, it's around, like up the hill and then like around the corner. I'm like, okay then. So I get to like the start of this road where the the convention center is, and there's another goddamn hill on the road. I'm like, I've got to say, get to the gate where the the stairs are. It's locked. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. To get into the venue at that point, you get to go up the hill some more, and then around up another ramp, and then up the ramp to get into the venue. After like 20 minutes of walking up hills, and soaked, I don't think I was ready for that event anymore. But but then you bumped into some people you know. Uh, top eight Darren was just there, you know, shooting the shit. You know, he's got his jacket on. You're like, oh, this whole thing, yeah, just 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 a finalist champion. You know, one of these, these cool kids. God damn it, Darren. So we go into the event. Everything seems to be fine. Sit down, unprepared. My opponent's quite happy. We're all good to go. Get a couple of round, get a couple of like uh, turns in, and then we realise that my opponent has misplayed, and it's technically classed as a unfixable board state, but we both agreed to it, unfortunately. Which then puts my opponent about four memory ahead of where he should be, which means that he's basically skipped a turn. Because he skipped a full turn. It's basically put me in a, in a position where I just couldn't come back through it. And I was misplaying then myself because I was trying to make, figure out like what can I do to like, try and like basically get back my turn. Um, and my opponent was just like, like he apologised constantly. Like, you know, he was really sorry. You know, it wasn't intentional. I don't think it was intentional. But obviously it's just a case of like, ah, crap. You know, we're, we're both in a situation now where we both know I'm basically hook, line, hook, line, and sinkered. And you're uh, you're obviously going to be getting away, for this, getting away with this one. So he wins the round. Um... Quite, I wouldn't say easily, but quite, uh, quite well. Like he was quite on the back burner, to be fair, for quite a while. I just couldn't get rid of his stuff though, because I just didn't have the right um, demon lords in hand to deal with him, unfortunately. And then, so that was like game. That was game one. I wasn't tilted, but I was like, oh man, that really sucks. The fact like my, my day is going to start off like this, where I basically lose because I wasn't paying attention when I was trying to figure out what, what my game was going to be. Go to round two. It's a mirror match. And the guy I'm talking to, he's a friend of the guy that just beat me. And I'm thinking, like, oh, crap, man, it's going to be terrible. He was cool as anything, man. He was a nice guy. He was like, hey, man, do you know these tricks with the Demon Lords? Like, you know, what's your ratios? These are my ratios. You know, blah, 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 blah. And it was, like, a really good, like, 25 minutes of just, like, back and forwards. But, again, I started off terrible. I couldn't get anything into my uh, my um, my eggs. He was, like, three, I think, bodies in, like, by turn two. He was, like, super far ahead. And I was just like, I don't think I can do, man. He's going to just, like... Get to Agudo and he's just gonna kick the crap out of me. And I think it's like my turn free or his turn free or whatever, and then um my first Agudo falls in the trash. I'm like, alright, if I can get like three more bodies into my my thing, like maybe you can take this one. And then all of a sudden he just couldn't like he couldn't put any new bodies in there because he says like all I'm all I'm drawing now and all that's going to my trash are the ones I already have in there. I think by like turn eight or turn nine, whichever it was, like I finally got enough out. End of his turn drag it all out, throw down a, a no good, and he was just like, yeah, man, you got game, you got this. So that's my first win of the day. Now, this is the first hour. My second match is Leviah. Pretty good into uh, Seven Demon Lords, as, unfortunately, Seven Demon Lords have to uh, kind of play the game of playing things out and getting hit by uh, Biting Crush. To be fair, the tech is also used in Seven Demon Lords. You know what comes around and goes around. I lose the deck out. Because I'm in a really weird situation. I either have to have my opponent let me pop their Digimon, which is Leviah. Have to let me recover, which um, they possibly won't do. Or they have to kill my thing. Now, to be fair, the, the killing of the thing is actually doable. And it makes me have an extra... It would have made me have an extra turn. So that's where I messed up. Um, I think I just try to pop it with like a Creepy. Or I, I, I do something to it basically to, to get rid of off the field. No, it might have been um, Rival's Barrage because I had two cards left in deck there, two cards left in deck. And I think I had to go up into like a room mode to just continue the play. And then it goes to them, they've got one left in deck, I've got one left in deck. 
No, they've got two, I've got one. So he just passes it back to me, and obviously he's just deck out. Then that's... Purple's fate, right? That's what you got to do. Then we go to another Leviah, and this is Keebs. So Keebs is playing against me. Miserable sod. I don't know what's up with him. He's just like, face like someone's been slapping around all day. He's absolutely miserable. To be fair, he's one and two at this point because he's got, he's got probably he's got the same score as me, right? So he's probably not having a good day. He's probably like, feeling really bad. But you know, we we kind of know each other. You know, we kind of know each other for the grapevine. And like, this is the thing with me. Like, I'm as jolly as I can be like, all day long. I can go like oh and seven, I'll still be like jolly because like I like playing Digimon. But he's miserable. So I don't know what's up with him. And he just doesn't want to. Like, he just doesn't want to be there. Like, it's really weird. Uh, but talking to like Alex, and he says like I've been up since like three o'clock, man. I'm absolutely like knackered already. It was like. You know, I was already awake for like seven hours at that point, man. I was dead. So I don't know if Cube's also up since like three as well. So maybe he was just like super tired. He was just like getting to him. Uh, but he's also playing Levi. And like, I knew Digimon has priority for like turn player. But like, I didn't know like how like things would trigger in response. Because it was like, he killed my thing so I could play something out. And I knew he had a biting in, in the back. So he'd then play his biting effect to like play out a Levi. And then it was like a case of like, okay, that thing's going to happen, but can I like play? And he's like, no, you can't do like these things because they, they're they like a an additional like interruption, but they're not the interruption that would interrupt at that time. So they have to like stick the board, do all the effects and then do it. I was like, okay, that's interesting to know. So, so the matchup, like the mirror match is like really weird then in comparison. Uh, but like, yeah, he just like, he, he gets like just stuck in, man. I think it's like turn four. I think he's just, he took me out. It's like, God damn it, man. And that's, that's the game that was at basically like no, uh, no coming back from that. And then, I'm trying to think what else then. Round five was uh, Demon Fox, uh, Demon Fang, Mr. Tamas. He came in, he's got uh, Ancient Gurumon. So I think it's like turn two, Ancient Gurumon. Turn three, Ancient Gurumon. Turn four, Ancient Gurumon. It's like, he's playing the blue base. Like, he can't get it back out of trash as far as I'm aware. But, like, every kind of time he drew a card, man, he just went like, all right, did you cross down? Did you cross down? Did you cross down? Couldn't do anything. Like it was just a case of like I couldn't get anything in the trash, so I couldn't get anything to be like scoop it underneath. He was just bouncing cards back to hand because I couldn't have anything in trash. I couldn't just like use the effect to like build up anything. It was just it was just a, like a no game for me. It was just very uh, very painful. And yeah, I can't remember my six my six round opponent. I don't know what they played apparently because I just can't remember who they I couldn't can't remember who they were, what they played or what they did. And then we go into round seven, and it was against Shine Greymon. And it was someone who I beat the night before to go four and two. And he was like super upset with me that night because, you know, I ruined his day because he went three and three in the end. So obviously you want to go four, you want to try and go four and two to get like a little bit more prizing. And he's running it back with the same thing again. And I just basically do the same thing I did to him the day before, which is a case of like, you know, summon something out, do do its effects, put a Shine Grey one on there. You know, basically make it so he can't move out of raising, can't bring out a, uh, oh, what's his face? Uh, Marcus. Like, he just can't do anything for, like, four turns in a row. Because so I've got super lucky mill two uh, Rovers Barrages. So, basically, it was just like, yeah, bring it back, do it again. Yeah, bring it back, do it again. Yeah, bring it back. So, it's constantly just, like, minus 5k, minus 10k, minus 5k, minus 10k, minus 5k, minus 10k. Like, just nothing they could do for, like, four turns in a row. And they were obviously, like... But what they were doing was, like, they were just building up their back line of just Marcus's. Uh, and we get to, basically, like, the final turn. It's a case of, like, if you can beat me this turn, you win. If you can't, I win the next turn. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, technically, I misplayed because I threw down a Biazimon to strip uh, two Digivolution sources, so it's a DG Level 2, because I was under the impression they just physically couldn't get hold of a Shine. What I should have done, though, is uh, I should have played out a Leviya EX6, because when they would play out their Tamer from going into their um, burst mode, it would have been able to trigger the effect of Mr. Uh, Alligator. X antibody, and I could have come out, popped a level three, which there was in the field, a level five, which there was in the field, and a level seven that was in the field, and they would have also popped a tamer. So that's where I misplayed, but no, they got me back. So we got one each now, so we've got to find each other again and try and go over, uh, you know, the eternal rivalry of uh, Shine Grey and Seven Demon Wars from now on. And then my final round opponent, a lovely lady from Birmingham, I've met her quite a few times in the past. She was playing Hexablau, and I think it was possibly the build that I've been playing. So. You know, she was doing her best, but unfortunately, 7 Demon Lords has a rock of really... Any, anything that's just removal is like a really good time into Hexablau, because it's obviously got no protection. And, uh, yeah, you just watch her build up a stack, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, one thing would come out and pop it. You know, Creepy Mon just go, like, yeah, bang. Um, you know, no, 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 did you, uh, you know, mill things, and, yeah, she wasn't having a good time. 
And then that was end of the day, so it was a 2-6 and six in the end. To be fair, I'm more of an aggro player than I'm a control player, but I don't think not seeing the correct cards would really help the situation either way. They went to the 3v3. Now, luckily for, I suppose, our team captain, he did really well during the day. I think he went 6-2, and two, which made him to go top 16. And so he's like, look, I'm dropping the, I'm dropping the group, man. You guys, you, you weigh me down. I'm jumping into my own like championship run. And fair play to him, he got to top 8, got his Omnimon, and then uh, unfortunately got uh, beaten by the guy that he beat to get into the top uh, 16. So, yeah, we get lucky. Round one is a buy for us. 26, uh, 29 teams, and unfortunately, yeah, we uh, we get the buy. So, Crimson, he goes off. He's like, I'm going to have some lunch. I'll see you guys in a bit. Like, yeah, yeah, but no worries. Just make sure you're back in here in half an hour. Um, round finishes. We get called back in, and he's, he's still not here. It's like, we, it's like, where's he gone? So, we're like, look, we can still play as a 2v3. It's just they get uh, the advantage. They get a free win. So, obviously, we both have to do our best to win. I'm not sure our uh, new new player was, Mr. Christian. I'm not sure who he played against in his first official round. But I played against a lovely bunny deck, Mr. Terry, uh, Mr. Terry and myself. And uh, she was just having fun. There's nothing wrong with it. I think free free is a lot of people will, like, they'll have like one player just playing a fun deck and then two other people can get to play like a bit more competitive decks. But uh, yeah, she was playing out. I think she hard played out a rapid monk because she was like, I'm playing like, for a turn because I've got the Willis out. Like, there's nothing you can do. I was like, all right. So I just fl threw down the uh, chaos mode. And I was like, pop a Tamer, or pop your Digimon, or pop your security and I can recover one. And she's like, pop my Digimon, because it's unaffected by the effect of being deleted. I was like, okay then, I attempt to pop, because I can't pop your Digimon, remove a security and I'll recover one. She's like, huh? I was like, yeah, I said, if, you don't, if I can't pop something that you've assisted I can pop, I can just do what the, the other effect, so she wasn't really happy with that. Uh, but she was a really good sport. And then, yeah, I think it was just a case of she just couldn't keep up with the, the uh, down punching of seven great demon lords because they are quite aggressive when they you get like a good opening hand or like a good set of mills or a, a good set of draws off of uh, like lucy the uh, the little lucy they went on to round three we were undefeated of 2-0 because we got very lucky with the buy and went up against another team i can't remember who people were. i was going up against like gabu hybrid and it was like a really like interesting build but they unfortunately put all the tamers to the bottom of the deck every time they did a search they went to the bottom um, and I always just kept them up one memory so they just couldn't do anything and then I, the same old trick you know four turns of suppressive rune mode but you just can't fight back against because rune mode just says no you can't play so I have to, I have to say like that deck is like it, the biggest thing of that deck is essentially just sitting on it for like four turns where you just go nope no playing and I think my first turn as well was just like um, Digimon Emperor as well so yeah play for free Digimon Emperor over to you and they, they just couldn't basically play the game so yeah I'll, I'll take those occasionally then it was round 4 it was against Galaxy or like a version of Galaxy I didn't see them going to the top end so I don't know if they were playing the top end if they were playing like the Mirage variant or if it was just the an actual just um, normal build but yeah they basically like turn 3 got their stack out swung Hit me for free. Um, and then they played out a Gutsumon, the, the new Gutsumon from BT17. So I couldn't play anything by effects. That was really painful. And then the following turn just took me out. And then we thought we were finished because we, we were 1 and 3. So it was like, okay, there's an undefeated now. They just beat us because we technically there's only three undefeated teams. Uh, and then the team that beat us was undefeated for 4 0. We were 3 1. The team next to us, who was also undefeated, was 3-1. Um, and then the team they were playing against was a 2-1 team. So, yeah, so there was three free ones, and then there was the 4-0. The Bandit doesn't do that anymore. You don't play until you're undefeated. You play, like, a minimum X amount of rounds, which was five rounds. So let's play another round. And so we go into the next round. I'm just like, crap, man, because, like, depending on what you go against... Like, it depends if this deck is going to be any good. Because it's really good into, like, a control -y matchup where I can control it. It's not so very good into, like, uh, aggro games. Because it's very rare that you get to do anything. Um, and they'll go against Galaxy again. It was just like, crap, man, I can't do anything. And they're like, no, no, man, like, Galaxy's, like, really bad against, like, seven Green Demons. Like, no, it's not. Because you just play all your team with that constantly if you can't play a Digimon out. And, like, I have to, it takes me, like, four to five turns to be able to play my game where you guys can do it in free. And that's why you, that's how you know the deck is good into a different deck. It's like you can't play like your own game plans. So what you just do is you just build up in the back. 
it's a different kind of deck then, but that's what you can do. So that was that was a Saturday. Um, we came second. The ancient demon digital bugs, whatever we were called. Uh, it's on X. I'll try and see if I can find it and put it in the video. But like it was a really good day overall. Still raining when we finished, but like it was really good. We stayed there from what was it like quarter past eight to like six in the end. So it was really, really it was a long day. But you know you got essentially a, a side event fully done and a Swiss done as well as the uh, top cut done. Plus they also had like two different uh, one piece events on, which I believe was both sold out. So yeah, man, can't complain. It was like a really good day. There's two things I will complain about though. It wasn't necessarily the fault of um, OPE because I don't think they control this. The lighting was really was really weird. It was like a, like a, a weird like purpley haze color, but it was like really dim. It was like very mood lighting. The mood was weird, man. <laughs> it was really weird mood lighting. But like uh, as you may have noticed, I now wear glasses, which means my eyes need a lot more sunlight, or in this case, uh, unnatural light to go into and be able to see things. It was really dark, and it was uh, quite uh, quite hard to read a lot of the cards or quite hard to see what was going on a lot of the time with how dark it was. But that's like, like the biggest gripe I'd say was that the lighting was weird. The second one is all the cards that we got that day are technically Pringle. They're all a little bit warped. It was really cold. It was really moist. It was really wet that day. I don't know if they were stored overnight in the facility. And so they just obviously had been absorbing all the moisture in the air, even through the uh, plastic seals. But yeah, it was all the cards were already U-shaping. So fingers crossed we can kind of get them back. But uh, as you can see, they are a little bit on the... Uh, the, the Pringly side, they're a little bit a bit warping. I mean, it's not too bad. We can probably straighten them out with a little bit of uh, a bit of luck. The participation ones are a bit more uh, curled over. But otherwise, like, you know, 9.9 out of 10. Great event. Doesn't matter if you want to lose, just have fun. Remember your defeats and all that. And then we went to a burger place. Yeah, yeah, you know, it can't be a gear swiftly if he doesn't go to a burger place when he goes to away for a finals or anything like that. Or a regional. So yeah, we went to a place called Bread Meets Bread fantastic lovely food i uh, would recommend it they do vegan they do vegetarian they do chicken they do beef whatever you fancy man it was like a, it was a really good night like a, it was there for like an hour and you felt it was there for like five minutes it was really good and then we all went our separate ways went to the Poundland on the corner between both of our hotels grabbed ourselves a couple of like soft drinks the evening just to sort of like you know relax as well as like uh, some snacky snacks i think i wrapped myself like some uh fizzy straws Yes, I'm on a diet. I have lost some weight. Don't worry. We'll be a bit thinner for finals and looking much, much more masculine and muscular for the event, as you may have seen again. A weird tanky picture of me on X, and that was our that was our Sunday. So we just had like a nice, quiet no Saturday. Sorry. So that was Saturday over. Sunday was an early morning because uh, your your biggest favouritist DigiTuber in the UK, Mister Aguirre Swiftly here, did not have a ticket to finals. So my body actually got up on its own at like quarter seven. It's like look just in case that they go live at 7, because Bandai kind of do sometimes push the button a little bit early. Get up, just in case. So I was up, I paid for the premium internet, just so that way the internet would be good. It was, my, my phone internet was better than their premium internet, unfortunately, so it was a waste of uh, 5 quid. 8 o'clock rolls around, I jump in, I grab a ticket, throw it in my box, go to buy it, when is your birthday? Yeah, no problem, I'll just type it in. No, no, no. You're an old man. And we do it by the pressing backwards on the clock style of calendar here. I'm like, oh my god, I have no idea how many tickets available. Please, for the love of God, let me get this ticket. So I'm poking my phone like crazy. And because I'm born in the lovely year of 1989, again, I am old. I was probably poking away for a good two minutes to try and get to my, my birthday. Got in there. Set it through. Money went through. I'm like, come on. We've got, I want these tickets, man. I don't mind just doing the side events if I go to, but I really want to like at least play. And we got the ticket, so we're in. Uh, as far as I'm aware, as of like earlier today, the tickets were still available. There's my wife. Uh, tickets were still available to um, jump into. So I don't know if they like doubled the event or if maybe they just put like an extra like uh, fifty percent in. But there are still tickets available. Hopefully they will sell because we'd like to see a big full event like we did last year. Uh, I didn't realise that how short the event was for Digimon this year. They actually halved it, so it was down from like 528 or it was to like 268 or something like that, or 260, uh, 272, whatever it is. But yeah, I didn't realise they halved it. I thought it was the same event again. I thought they were going to add more. So that explains why Digimon sold out like that, which is obviously really annoying. And that was essentially my Sunday. I didn't really do anything else Sunday besides go and see the boys, where the picture came from. 
we had ourselves a breakfast at the local pub. It was open on a Sunday. We went for breakfast and nothing else. They wouldn't even sell us alcohol if you wanted it. Uh, I had a nice uh, salted caramel latte. It was very tasty, very nice. And I had their uh, Louder's breakfast, which was, I think, like two sausages, two bacon, three eggs, uh, some toast, uh, two ash browns, some beans. It was very nice. Uh, one mushroom, one uh, half cut tomato. It was good. A little expensive, but nice. Very good. Very good. I was a fan. And then the boys went off. We went for a little walk. Went to the anime store. Saw some uh, Digimon merch there. Wife told me, no, you cannot bring it home. No. I was like, okay. You let me come away for the weekend. I'll, I'll listen to you. I won't bring home the big Omnimon. And then we took the boys to the, uh, the station. They went their way. I went the other way. Grabbed myself something for lunch. Uh, and then went back to my room and just laid there for a little bit. Watching my phone. Relaxing. Charging my phone. I got a charger. It works now. And that was uh, that was my afternoon. Just basically relaxing. And then I popped out about half six I think it was went to Jollibee's first time at Jollibee's going to say really good experience we'll go again I'll probably be disappointed that time but no it's fantastic Jollibee's I can understand why I think they're Filipino um, basically have kept the other fast food chains from the uh, the west out because they are actually really tasty and really good and uh, fair play to having such a like a, a tasty menu and that was my night then went back relaxed for a bit again with more more stuff on my phone had a, just a quiet night um, and then came to Monday, woke up Monday, got ready to come home, uh, recorded some stuff, which now is not going to be used, because I'm just going to use this as a whole, like, uh, one episode vlog kind of thing. And then we went to the train station, got to the train station a little bit early, like, only a little bit early, it wasn't, like, super early, I think it was, like, 20 minutes early. There was a train currently coming in on the platform that I had to leave from, so I was like, yeah, yeah, it's obviously my train, because, like, no, you don't normally have, like, a train coming in and instantly go away, and then another train pulls in straight afterwards. Normally they'll, they'll sit there for a few minutes. So I spoke to the lady. She says, yeah, yeah, just use the train there, number four. So I got on the train. Sat down in first class because we had this conversation. I was like, am I in first class? I've paid for first class. I didn't even take first class on the way in because I didn't realise it was a first class on this train. It's literally like half a carriage. But like, either way. So I jumped in first class, sat down, got relaxed. I was like, I'm on the train. I'm going to sit here for like 15 minutes. And then we're going to uh, take our places in Edinburgh again before we jump on the next train to come home. All of a sudden my train just bolts out of the station. I'm like, what's going on? As we've left the station, the tannoy goes over. We are going to X, Y, Z, E, F, G, and then Edinburgh. I'm like, at least we're going to Edinburgh, but is Edinburgh Waverley the place I need to go? Because all I know is the Edinburgh station. So I've checked it up. Yeah, it's the right place. It's the, basically the turn. If you go to Edinburgh, you're going to Waverley. So I'm like, thank God, at least I'm going to the right place. So panic over. Panic instantly sets back in again. What time am I getting to Edinburgh? Will I make it on time for my train? Look at it. I'll get in like five minutes earlier than the other train. Okay, awesome. So that's not bad then. So going through, feeling a little less stressed. The internet does not cut out once during this train journey. Where on the way in, it just did, didn't work. So I don't know what the journey is, but apparently there's a lots of uh, telemaster around on the way back on that journey. But overall, nice peaceful journey. Good time. I suppose the conductor was nice to him and said, look, mate, I'm really sorry. I've got on the wrong train. I didn't realise. I have a ticket, which for the tra next train after this one. I didn't I didn't realise. I, right, I thought this was the right train. Looks at it, scans it, goes, now nah, you're fine, mate, just sit down, don't worry about it. So, thank you for, thank you for him for being quite, you know, leaning with me. Got to Edinburgh, grabbed myself some breakfast, because I thought, like, I'm not going to have anything to eat on the train until, like, lunchtime, probably. Got on the train, it was in super early, so I got on the train. Right train, it was just in really early. I sat down, had my breakfast, enjoyed my coffee, just vegged out a little bit, and we're off. 10 o'clock hits, we just go. Great, awesome, we're on, we're on time. Two minutes later, lady comes around and goes, Ah, sir, what do you want for your lunch? I just I just wolfed down breakfast. It's like, uh Adam complained last time about the uh the bacon. I'll grab myself some curry. You know, I'll have a Bombay potato salad curry thing. It really nice, smelled really like very aromatic, very very flavorful, very nice, actually good. Um There's a picture again on X. Go on X if you want to see what I do over the weekend if you want like more or a picture variety. Um uh, so yeah. Enjoyed that over about half an hour because you know I was quite full from breakfast still. <laughs> had had a coffee with it, had a water with it. It's nice. Um, I think we get like two stations in. I think it might be Newcastle. An older lady gets on, and she's uh, sitting next to me. But the, the seat opposite, because we're on a free chair table, is empty. And she goes, "Hey, is anyone sitting there?" I said, "No." I said, "It's empty till we get to uh, London. It's empty for the whole train journey." And she just goes to me, "Hey, I'm gonna nick that seat." And I was like, "I don't blame you." So if I thought about it earlier, I'd have also nicked that seat. So she sits over there, she's doing her work, she's 
very quiet for the whole trip, occasionally giggling at like what the staff is doing, but she's a, just a very nice, uh, quiet lady all the way through. Uh, we have a good time. And then some gentleman's next to me. And he reeks, man. I think he's pooped himself. He stinks horrible. He's farting all the time. And this comes from a guy who also has like in intestinal issues, so I understand you got to fart when you got to fart. But like he just stank horrible. And he was just like, God damn, man, you're in first class. You smell like you pooped yourself. Like go to the toilet, man. Just sort yourself out. But it was a, it was not a nice journey to next to that guy for about an hour. And then he just gets up and goes sits at a different table. And it's like okay, like no one was taking that seat. No one like pushed him out. He just walked off and just sat on another table. So that was weird. Come get home or get to Peterborough for like quarter to two ish. I'm like great. I can get home before school's out. I'll pick up my son. I'll have a nice afternoon. Quiet even. So I get get back to Bourne. As you all know when I was the town I live in. I said to the missus, hey, if you're still out, do you want to come meet me? She goes, uh, the littlest one, after he had his flu vaccination, has asked to go into town. I was like, all right, I'll meet you in town. On the way into town, she's like, oh, by the way, we're in Witherspoons, because he's asked to go for, for lunch at Witherspoons. He wanted a, a spaghetti pasta and uh, some bananas. So I've gone to meet him, grabbed the keys, come back, threw my stuff in the house, gone for a pee finally after about eight hours, and then gone to get me lad. On the way out of the house, I get a notification from Trainline, which is the train company I normally use, because it's fairly simple, and they use PayPal. It makes things easy for me. Rather than having to like carry my card everywhere and try and figure out things on the way on the go. Oh, your train didn't take off for over an hour. Oh, the train that I was meant to be on at nine o'clock didn't leave the station until ten past ten. I would have missed my train and I wouldn't have come home today. I wouldn't be recording this video today. I'd have been somewhere miserable. Maybe it's nice out there. So, despite the fact that I got on the wrong train unintentionally and got to Edinburgh a little bit quicker. Sometimes you have to roll the dice and be just very unlucky while being very lucky at the same time. So, that's where we are now. And then, yeah, got home, spent some time with the kids, spent some time with the wife. Give her a kiss, because she hasn't kissed her a few days. I'm sure she was happy to have a kiss on the head, just to make herself feel a little bit more loved and appreciated from her husband, who's been gallivanting around the Northern Highlands for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so we are now. So, that's it. We're all done now for a little bit. Um, back to regularly scheduled stuff. So, deck profile, Friday, Monday... Uh, swiftly versus swiftly I'm going to try and throw some things in between as well just to try and get things going as I'm sure Mrs. Swiftly will have to come downstairs now as I'm sure she's sitting on the stairs with her phone blaring occasionally as uh, she's trying to give me a little peace and quiet she could just sit down next to me and giggled at me for a bit I know she likes giggling at me for a bit but uh, yeah that's it I'm going to try and get a few more videos out this week I'm going to try and get like four videos out this week try and get you guys some more entertainment because obviously I'm sure you've missed me over the weekend without missing two whole videos and I'm sure YouTube would be you know quite a miss for me not making a video but alas, these is where we are. Um, but yeah, so we're all pretty good now. Done a regional for the season. We've got one more regional coming up at 26th of October, which I believe is the online uh, raid and trade regional. And then I'm working a lot of the weekends during November. I'm off the last two. Uh, I've requested if I can cast for the Ultimate Cup OPE event on the 30th, I believe. So that way you guys get to have my voice for a long day. Well, I'm sure my wife will uh, regret saying it's okay for me to do. And then the f the week after that, I think it is, we're all in the Netherlands having finals and maybe casting. There's nothing been said for Digimon, I'm afraid. As far as, I'm aware, as, far, as far as I'm aware, One Piece is the only thing that's getting cast that weekend. It'd be nice to have my voice out there for finals, but unfortunately it won't be there. But, alas, that is the end of it. So, ciao for now. Mwah. Catch you guys in the week. Hope yourself have a good week until then. And as always, remember your defeats. And I don't do this a lot, as you may have seen from the old video. Subscribe, like, comment. I actually like reading your comments. I do like replying to them. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys soon. So, peace and goodbye.